How's it going, boys and girls? In this video, we're going to be talking about nonlinear inequalities, and we're actually going to be solving them, so we're not going to be graphing, even though you know how to graph nonlinear functions. Remember, a linear function looks something like that. Yeah, there's your linear equation. That might be what it looked like. It's a linear function. If you take out the pirate, the R, it says line. So lin, line pirate, eh, linear function, yeah. Okay, anyways, that's your linear function. Right, a quadratic is not linear function, so maybe we'll be solving something to do with this. Or maybe we will be solving something to do with a cubic function, which looks like this. That's your equations. You don't need to be writing these down, so if you've already paused the video and written all three down, I'm sorry. That's a rational function. We may be solving something like that. So pretty much there's not much to talk about. It's just a matter of doing some examples. You don't have to learn anything. It's just solving. So here we go. Alright, I'm actually going to start out simple with you guys, and I'm just going to start out with an equality. Remember, it is an equality because it has an equal sign, right? It is equal to, and in this one we would know x equals 6 and x equals negative 1, negative 1. And these are the points, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 1, where your parabola, because your multiple, or your highest exponent would be x squared, to do if you multiply those out, remember from uh, what is that 2.2? 2.2, the end behavior would go there, and we would have zeros. The points where they are actually equal to zero, notice that part equal to zero, that's why they're called zeros or solutions, right? Yay, yay, okay, are negative six and negative one, or sorry, negative positive six, positive six, positive six. Okay, I'm gonna look at some though that are going to be a little different. All right, with this one, I have the same exact equation, x minus 6, x plus 1, right? Yeah, the only thing different is that it says it is greater than or equal to 0. So what that means is my function needs to be greater than or equal to 0. I'm going to show you a way that we can solve this without graphing and having to think about it. Well, I know my zeros are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and I have negative 1. If I were to graph this function again, it would look like that, right? So I'm only looking for the numbers where it is bigger than zero. So I would have everything over here because that's where it's bigger than zero. And I would have everything over there because that is also where it is greater than zero. What we usually do, though, is we will put it on a number line. I know my critical points, critical points. These types of points are points that you can have as zeros. There are also numbers that you can't have in rational functions. We will talk about those in a little bit, though. So with this one, I know that some of my critical points, or points that matter, are 6 and negative 1, because that's where it changes. So I can put those on a number line. Put negative 1, and I'll put 6. Okay. We are going to test the intervals around this. So for a number... Just you pick numbers outside of the interval. So say like a number less than negative 1 would be negative 2. If I substitute negative 2 into both of these functions, well, I would have negative 2 minus 6 times negative 2 plus 1, which would be negative 8 times negative 1, which would give me positive 8. Okay. When you get good at these, you're not going to have to go through all this and think whether it or what number it equals to or not. What? That didn't make sense. You won't have to think what number it equals to. There we go. Say it right. Cool. Okay. Biggest thing here is if it comes out of positive or negative. If it's bigger than zero, those types of numbers are positive numbers, so I'm trying to look for positive numbers. Well, since this number is positive, and I know my critical value, it changes what it's doing right there, that means everything on this side will be positive numbers. You can write plus sign. I write positive like that like I told you in another video, I think, I believe, plus VE stands for positive. Okay, then we're going to test another number in a different interval. Between negative 1 and 6 could be a number like 0. So here's the fast way of checking this. If you substitute in 0, this would be negative 6. Basically, all I need to know is it would be a negative number. I would have a negative number times 0 plus 1 would make a positive number. So a negative number times a positive number I know will be a negative number. Cool, that's a negative interval. Then I'm going to pick a number that is greater than 6. Say I choose 10 because it's easy. I like easy numbers. doesn't matter what you pick. You could pick 9. You could pick 50. You could pick 10 million. I don't care. makes no difference. Just pick a number that is in that interval. So if I substitute in 10, this will be a positive number. This will be a positive number. I know a positive times a positive is always a positive, so this is a positive interval. Since I'm looking for things that are greater than 0, I'm looking for positive numbers, so I have these intervals. 
which means I have the interval from negative infinity all the way up to negative 1, where it is included because it is or equal to, and the numbers from 6 to infinity. Remember, the union sign just means and. Union, union, math man says and. Cool. And that's all you're going to have to do. It'll go faster the more you practice. So keep practicing. Practice and practice and practice. Here we go again. Okay, here's... Oh, no. <laughs> uh, here's another problem. I'm not going to worry about deleting that. With this one, notice not like the last one, or unlike the last one, it is not equal to zero. Uh, that makes sense in some universe. Biggest thing here. This is greater than four. It is easiest when it is greater than or less than zero because then all I have to do is plug in numbers and test whether they're positive or negative. So what we can do, just like if we were solving a quadratic function, I can multiply this out and get x squared minus 16. Oh, no, I can't. I lied. I'm going to rewrite this one. One minute. I don't know why I say things like one minute because really in your world it's just instantaneous. So anyways, if I multiply this out, I have x squared minus 8x plus 16. That's a 6. Now it's 16. That looks like h6. That is plus 16. I am just not able to write things. Ah! x squared minus 8x plus 16. Oh, I almost did it again. Greater than 4. Okay, if I want it to equal 0, I will subtract the 4 to the other side, and I'll have x squared minus 8x plus 12 greater than 0, which that will factor to make my life easier. So I'll have <laughs> factoring factoring minus 6 minus 2 factoring so I know my critical values are x equals 6 and x equals 2 so if I put those numbers on a number line I have 2 I have 6 they're both positive so a number that is outside of 2 would be 0 if I put in 0 into this function notice you're going to use the one that says your relationship to zero. Because if I'm looking for numbers that are bigger than zero, I'm looking for positive numbers. Okay, so if I have zero, this would be negative, this would be negative, so that would be a positive interval. If you want, I usually like to write dashed lines so that I know what intervals to test. Say I choose four because four is between two and six. If I plug in four, that is negative two and positive two, which will make a negative number. Bigger than six, 10, I like easy numbers. 10 minus 6 is 4, 10 minus 8 is 2, that will also make a positive number. So I know I have everything up to there and everything up to there. But notice this time I have just greater than. So for my interval notation, I'm going to write this in a different color. Do, 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 negative infinity all the way up to 2. And 6 to infinity. Notice both of these represent open points because it is not equal to 2 when it is not equal to 6. It is only when it is greater than 0. Cool. All right, doing another one. Yay, again, again. Okay, with this one, it's already greater than, or sorry, less than zero. So I can say x plus 7, x plus 1 is less than zero. So I can pull out my critical values or critical points, whatever you want to call them. Critical values, critical points, critical values, critical points, same thing. Makes me happy. Critical values, critical points. Critical values, critical points. Yay, CBCP. Nah, it's not really a thing. I'm just making stuff up. So, But really, critical values, critical points, those are real things. So then I can put them on a number line. So I have negative 7 is less than negative 1. Check that out. I can hold two pens at once and write with the other one. Oh, it's a fun trick. So if I substitute a number that is less than negative 7, they say negative 10. That'll be a negative. That'll be a negative which means this is a negative interval. Let's draw dashed lines. Between negative 7 and negative 1 would be negative 3. This will be 4. That will be... Oh, wait. No, I like that's positive. Sorry. My bad. So that's a negative. Negative times each other is a positive. So this is a negative interval. And then bigger than 1 would be 0. 0 if you can pick it. It's always the easiest number. Because then you see a 7 times 1 is a positive number. This will not, I know it has in the last three examples, but this will not always necessarily come out negative, or sorry, positive, negative, positive. Do not trust that. It will not be true. If you keep doing that, it will be wrong. And I will say boo-hoo. I did a rhyme.
<laughs> so I have everything from negative infinity all the way up to negative 7, and it is not included. Union, negative 1 to infinity. And there it is. All right, with examples like this, just like in the last one, we have to state off to the side 4x minus 3 cannot equal 0. Not possible. Can be an answer. So I'll move over the 3 and divide by 4, so x cannot equal 3 fourths. This is actually a critical value. Things that you cannot have are also critical values. Your asymptotes are critical values. So make sure you write this off to the side your very first step. You need to do that. Otherwise, you'll miss some points. Okay. And then, from this point, we can just solve like we know how. So at 4x minus 3, if I multiply by that on both sides, I will have x plus 6 is greater than 4x minus 3. Oops. It's so 1 times 4x minus 3 is just 4x minus 3, so I will subtract. Uh, I'll move this over here so I keep it positive. So 6 is greater than 3x minus 3. And then I'll add the 3, so 9, 3x. So x is less than or equal to 3. So really what that means, don't pay too much attention to your inequality here. Just know that 3 is another one of your critical values. So you need to put both of these numbers on your number line. So if we have 3 fourths and we have 3, you need to test all of those. Notice 3 fourths you cannot have, 3 you could have because it's less than or equal to. This one is strictly we cannot have 3 fourths. Okay, testing intervals, I will pick 0 and I will substitute it in to... Hmm, this function up here. So if I have 0 plus 6, that is 6 over negative 3. 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 is not greater than 1. Between 3 fourths and 3 could be like 1 because that's easy to test. 1 plus 6 is 7. 4 minus 3 is 1. 7 divided by 1 is 7, which is greater than 1, so that is a good interval. Bigger than 3, let's say 10. 10 plus 6 is 16 over 37. 16 over 37 is not bigger than 1. So I only have the interval from 3 fourths to 3. Happy day. All right, we're getting close to the finish line. This is going to be a short video, which is awesome, because I know I've made some longer ones. But hopefully they've been informative, and we're all going to do well in our tests, because I know that the last test we had an average of 81, at least, at least for the, uh, what is this, fall semester of 2015? Yeah. Yeah, you guys did pretty good, so I was proud of you guys. Uh, all right, so with this one, solved in this one. Again, I cannot have x minus 2 equal to 0. Not possible. So one of my critical values is x cannot equal 2. Okay, make sure you get that. If you miss it, you're going to miss a lot of stuff, and I'm going to be sad. I will have sad frowny face, and I will say, no, just like that. But you won't see it because I'm grading your paper. I'll, I'll just, Anyways, so with this one, then we can multiply by x minus 2 on both sides to get rid of the denominator there. So I have x squared minus x minus 11 is less than or equal to 3 times x minus 2, which if you distribute that, oh, it got shaky. We have x squared minus x minus 11 less than or equal to, not 6x, 3x minus 6. I'm not thinking well. It is a Saturday night, and I don't want to be working. I want to be playing darts or whatever. I... Anyways, I'm making work. So minus 3x plus 6, minus 3x plus 6. But it doesn't make sense that it's Saturday night, because it's like a Monday afternoon to you or whatever it is to you. Hopefully. Anyways, so I would have x squared minus 4x minus 5 is less than or equal to 0, which that will factor as x minus 5 and x plus 1 less than or equal to 0. So I have my other critical points, 5 and negative 1. So I can make my number line, sh number schmain. This time I'm going to have three numbers. I will have negative 1, I will have 2, and I will have 5. So I'm going to have to test all of those intervals. So I'll just put my little dots just to say for fun, just so I kind of help split them up in my head. And I'm going to test them with this function now. So I'm looking for numbers less than or equal to 0. I cannot have 2. I could have this one or this one since I got these from my zeros. But I got 2 from something that I cannot have because it's not possible in my original function. 
So here, if I test a number less than negative 1, say I test negative, I don't know, 10, that would make a negative, that would make a negative, negative times a negative is a positive. Between negative 1 and 2, I could test 0. Negative times a positive is a negative. Between 2 and 5 could be 3 or 4 or 4.5 or whatever you want to make it. 3 minus 5 is a negative. 3 plus 1 is a positive, so this is also a negative. Bigger than 5 would be like 10, which will make positive and both, so positive there. So now I have everything except for the point at 2. So I would have the interval. Oh, and I'm looking for negative numbers, right? Negatives and negatives. So from negative 1, and this should be a bracket, negative 1 to 2, union 2 to 5. And there would be my solution set. Yay! All right, and this one I'm giving a function. It is asking for the domain. You guys did this back in Chapter 1, if you remember. I hope you do. Just remember that the domain of a square root function, well, I know that numbers that are negative, if I take square root of negative numbers, they are imaginary. So hopefully all this stuff inside has to be a positive number or pretty much just bigger than or equal to 0. So if I say x squared plus 5x minus 24 has to be greater than or equal to 0 for I even to have a domain there. It's not proper English. Oh, well, don't worry about it. I can't sit still either. My desk is moving around. So I can factor this into x what plus 8 and x minus 3. 8 times 3 is 24. 8 minus 3 is 5. So I have x equals negative 8 and I have x equals 3. Cool. So if I make my number line, I have negative 8. I have 3. Always put those numbers in order from least to greatest so that it just makes it easier on you to test intervals and write interval notation and give me the proper answer. So I'll pick negative 10. Do -do -do, do -do -do. I'll pick 0 and I'll pick 10. Sure, why not? So if I plug in negative 10 here, that's a negative number. Times a negative is a positive number. 0 would make a positive times a negative, so that would be a negative number. 10 would make a positive times a positive, which is also a positive number. Now make sure you look at your function. It says my function needs to be greater than or equal to 0, which tells me I want positive numbers. So I will take this interval and this interval, and I will write them as my answer. So negative infinity to negative 8, where it is inclusive, union 3 to infinity. Yay! I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. And this is Mr. Pike signing out. Have a great rest of your weekend. Or week, or whatever you're... Anyways, you'll watch this video. Have a good day.